And we are, of course, joined for a whole hour by the brilliant Paul Merson. Um, he's here to discuss everything about his new book. It's called Hooked. I've got a copy in front of me. Um, I have had a read as well, Paul, and I just think it's um, incredibly... In fact, what it says on the front, Jamie Redknapp says here... Brave, poignant, very moving. This will change lives. Jeff Stelling as well. A courageous, emotional and vitally important book. And you can tell from the reaction of, of people already listening this morning yeah. how much this cuts through really and, and how much people can relate to what you're going through. And to hear someone like you talk about it, I think is, is, is really the key thing because... A lot of people in addiction don't think there's a way out, Paul, do they? Mm. They, they mm. don't ever feel like it will let them go. Um, how much help have you had and, and what did help you? <coughs> Uh, I, I'd had in, I did have enough of being like the way I felt. I did. It just got to a stage. Thirty six years of, you, you know, when I was drinking, I, I wasn't enjoying drinking. I didn't like it. I just drunk to take me out the way I felt, and I just got fed up with it. In the end, I'd get back from the pub or whenever it was, and and Kate would go, "Did you have a laugh with the lads?" And I'd like, not really. No, I didn't. I was just doing it for the sake of doing it, and and that was it. But it. <coughs> You never think you're getting out of this and you don't until you've realised that you have an illness. You know, as I said, the cycle just keeps on going round. You hate yourself, you come out of it. You know, I, I mean, it, mine was that bad, my gambling situation as well. was The only time I was relieved is when I had nothing left. When I got down to zero and I had no money, it was like... I don't have to do this anymore. <clears throat> and people will think, how how mad is that? And it, it is, it just takes over your life. The compulsion becomes so much that, you, you know, I say in the book, I was playing at Aston Villa and we was playing Charlton away and I always had my own room. No one would share with me because of my gambling and I never sleep in the afternoon. And I wanted to break my fingers so I couldn't pick the phone up. You know, that's how bad the compulsion was. And I, I just couldn't, I couldn't stop myself. And... Until you realise that you're ill, I mean, it's so important to to know because no one's a bad person. You know, there's good in everybody and you need to sort of like, you need to understand that. You're not searching because we all search. When I know I've been doing it for 36 years is to try and be a good person. I am a good person. But when I'm in addiction, I become very selfish. I have no time for anybody. You know, I don't ring people. People ring me. I don't answer the phone. But when I'm not and I, I get well, I, you know, I, I care for people and I, you know, and, and I don't become selfish, which is one of the big things with addiction. You, you become very selfish. I was going to say, Mercy, I'm looking at it here and do you have the opportunity to go, I mean, the, the book's unbelievable and I've got to say to you, Jamie Redknapp says an incredible thing when he's talking about brave and it is, it's unbelievably brave to, to face up to... I know you won't think it's brave, but a lot of people, I, I can understand Jamie saying that. Now, do you have, will you have the opportunity and do you want to have the opportunity to perhaps go to the Gamblers Anonymous meetings, the Alcohol Anonymous meetings, and maybe talk and help other people? Because the book, as, as you're seeing from the reaction, is definitely helping people. Of that, there's no doubt. Do you think you standing up at one of these meetings would help as well? I do I do the meetings. I go to the meetings. That's that. Great. You know, I'm... As I said, I'm ill trying to get well. That's my medicine. My yeah. medicine's AA and GA. I, I couldn't do it without that. I, that's 100%. That is my medicine. You know, I'm around people that, you know, when I talk, they're nodding. They're nodding their heads. You know, I'm not telling a story and their people are shaking their head, making me hate myself even more for yeah. what I've done. They're like, yep, yeah, you know. And th and that's that's what it's all about. I have to do my GA meetings and my A and talk to my friends in AA and GA. And, you know, I just done a big, big share in, uh, which is a talk in LA on Zoom two weeks ago. So, yeah, I do that. You know, I, I do oh. that a lot. I have to do them. That is my medicine. You know, like when people get ill, they have to go and take something. That's my medicine. So, yeah, GA and AA, I could never do it without that. 100% I couldn't. On the back of the book, I think it's um, quite an, an interesting, right, what you say here, which sums up a lot of, of what you feel about addiction and what a lot of other people will feel as well. You say the addiction is not in the drink or the bet or the drug. The addiction is in my head. It's an inside job. When you're a compulsive gambler and you have money, it isn't burning a hole in your pocket. It's burning a hole in your mind. Drinking was like, was like boarding a rocket for me, a ticket to a different world. 
always remember addiction needs you on your own but it doesn't have to be that way you are not alone and it's that idea of escapism isn't it that your mind is, is trying to get you away mm. from something that you're not happy with or, or this illness that you have and putting you in a different place and, and to get into that different place you're using gambling you're using drugs you're using drink you're using whatever it is that that, that you use to get you out of that place um you did a lot of things really that, that we've seen on tv lately harry's heroes was mm. was something that you're so brilliant on and involved with and i just wondered how that helped yeah it, it you know what the first one you you look at the first one and i was in the back of a taxi and and i was crying my eyes out. i was i was really struggling badly with the gambling, you know, and I opened up and I was struggling. You know the frightening thing about this addiction and how, how, how gripping it is? I still went back and gambled after that and I was on the floor. I mean, literally on the floor, but the addiction still still told me that it'll be all right. Next time I'll be all right. You'll be able to do it next time. And that's where that's that showed me how dangerous this addiction is because when you see, it's very rare that, I'm very fortunate because I see things. It's like, you know, I, it's been filmed, it's been on the telly and you can look back and and it, it scares me to death. It, it does scare me to death that it's still out there. It's out there. It's doing, you know, people relate to my addiction is doing press-ups. You know, I, I went six years without drinking. I went six years without drinking and went into a treatment centre for gambling addiction. I come straight out of the tr uh, treatment centre in Arizona. I landed I got home and I started drinking again the next minute. So I just swapped my addictions around, literally just swapped them around. And, and that's been the case all the time. This is, it, it's not about, you know, it's not about the money. It's not about, you know, I, I lost a lot of money I, I, and, and that's never coming back. It's just not, that's just the way it is. I lost time, I lost time. And that's, 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 the, that's the main one that hurts me mm -hmm. is that, you lose moments. People go, oh, what was it like, 89? You won the league. You know, what happened after? I ain't got a clue. I ain't got a clue. Perry Groves, I rely on Perry Groves to tell me because all I was worried about was ha hope we have enough beer on that coach for on the way home and we don't run out. That was my only worry. When you came on the show earlier on, you were saying that you hope, even if it just helps one person, that mm. you would feel better. Um, I cannot tell you how many messages we've had come through. I'm an ex-serviceman who lost my dad through alcohol. I've lost my marriage due to alcohol. Listening to Merce, I can see myself a true inspiration. He says, thank you very much. Um, this one as well, I just wanted to say thank you to Merce. I'm struggling with a few things at the minute. And reading his book, I can relate to so much of it. It's comforting to know you're not alone with these feelings. And mm. many others will find it a great help too. The Magic Man was a hero. I was a kid and even more so now keep it up Merce um, keep your texts coming through as well because we're going to read them out and um, Merce look you wanted to help one person you're helping a lot already it's such a brilliant book and you're with us until 10am Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods Monday to Wednesday morning 6 till 10 on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker Talk Sport